companies. One is Extra Ideas. That's uh, a fruit line advertisers drop digital agency. Um, extra music. Uh, that speaks for itself basically. It's a record label. And then Zero Degrees. So Zero Degrees is a production and content company. So we produce both audiovisual uh, stuff at Zero Degrees. So basically, that's uh, who I am. And that's what I do. How exactly does it entail to a modern It's crazy. I don't even know what made me think <laughs> I should. There should be an easier way of making a living, to be honest, because it's a crazy place. It's a vibrant company or group of companies with young people, very nimble, think very fast, so it's, it's pretty a hectic operation. But again, at the same time, on the other side, it's fun because it's a very creative environment where most of the stuff we do is based on creativity. If you wanted to make a good record, for instance, you, you need to be able to feel the vibe and the kind of creative vibe in the studio. Uh, for instance, Bears and Braves were in the studio yesterday recording the new record. I, I just like to go into the studio and just listen to the pre state when they are thinking about this thing. And if it was like creating a campaign for its salads, that's one of our major clients, for instance, and I walk into the creative department, just that vibe, the energy that goes into like deciding what we really want to do and the creative direction we want to go. Or even when it comes to like zero degrees, where we need to like record maybe either a soundtrack, a jingle, or create a documentary for a client and do the production, the pre-planning stage. Uh, it takes a lot of energy and creativity to be able to like survive in in an extreme HQ like we like to call the uh, office. Okay, so um, what's your story? Tell us where did it all begin? When? How did you start? Okay, actually, I I studied theatre at uh, at Amadou Bello University. Back in the day, I think around '94, as I used to '94, and I just thought I, I was born in Kaduna. I grew up in Kaduna, and like a, a boy that school up north, you know, we get to hear the second-hand gist from Lagos like months after it's happened. But at some point, <laughs> I just found out that <laughs> there's, I, I think, three months to the expiration of my service year, which I did with NTA Kano. Uh, I, I got the solution because. From the one I always wanted to be a broadcaster, I wanted to go into broadcasting. And then I, I pushed and showed and got myself into NTA Kano. And I quickly realized that people look good on TV, but actually they don't get so well paid. And that was where the disillusionment came in. And I was wondering, now what do I do? So I read an interview in the in the in the newspaper, I think Vanguard newspaper. There was this uh some kind of stuff on advertising agency and my former employer Mr. Lulu Akomi started talking about Primo Garden back in the days, what to do, how to do it and I, and I got interested. So I started going to the library, there was no internet back in those days like it is today. I started going to the library to research about advertising agencies, what to do. But I quickly discovered that there's this department called Creative Department in an ad agency and what to do and there's also this other sub department called copywriting. Wow, I could do this. Then I started giving myself imaginary briefs and trying to write stuff for it. But at some point, I, re I realized, trying to do all the research about where the ad agencies are, where I could fit in, I realized that every major ad agency was in Lagos. So if I was going to go anywhere with my career, it had to be Lagos. So I think on June 8, 1995, I woke up with a promise to myself. This one that's risen in uh, Kaduna is not going to set us to find me in Kaduna. So I did something crazy. I, I took my bag and I came to Lagos. I got to Ojota. Up to the time I got to Ojota, I wasn't quite sure where I was going to live. Really. And I got here, then I suddenly realized long story, I got myself as a squatter in some other hotel in around my area. And I ended up still staying in that hotel for like two years. Uh, and now I was there trying to get myself an appointment and interview. And the first dude that gave me a break, uh, God bless him, Mr. Victor Johnson, who was the general manager of MCN, the Search and Search Agency back in the days. I went to Shunbaya State and I told him my story. I just came from Kalina. I have this crazy idea that I want to be a copywriter and I know I'm good. And that gave me a shot, told me to write a test. I wrote the test, I apparently passed it because they gave me a job like two months later. So, I mean, for all the scary nature of Lagos, 
I came in here and I stayed for like three, two months without a job. I think July, August, by September, I just started my first job. I stayed there for like five years, and then I moved to Ogilvy, Primogane to Ogilvy. Ogilvy also gave me a shot, bless him, uh, and uh, I worked there for another five years. Then he had this uh, beautiful idea to set up another younger agency called One for One Worldwide, and then he set that one up, and they moved me there as creative director. So I was pioneer creative director for One for One. I worked there for like seven years. And then uh, by April last year, I had this stupid idea that I had to start up on my own. Actually, I was 29 when I started working for Mr. Akumi, and I left at 41. So I just uh, I paid my dues. I just wanted to do something different. And we set up uh, Extreme Ideas, and it's been so, um, ever since. What do you need to succeed in advertising in this environment, Nigeria? It's, uh, there are two major things you need. Uh, the God Factor, which is, I'm not a pastor, so I'm not going to talk about the God Factor, but it's definitely a big plus if you have it. Some will call it luck. I don't know if I believe in luck, but that factor that just makes you uh, succeed against all odds, yeah, you need that. But beyond that, there are two critical factors that you must learn if you really want to succeed. One is creativity. I mean, without it, you're dead. As an agency, that's the only thing you sell. It's the only thing that's going to distinguish your work from the work of the other agencies. And as extreme ideas, we hit the scene with the intention to redefine the industry. I mean, you ask yourself, why will a client like a salad not give the their business to an agency that has been existing for like over 30 years. Why would they do it to an agency that just started like six months ago? The, the answer to that question is the kind of creative edge you bring to the table. Because one is creativity. Second, most important factor again is networking. As at seven years ago, I had compiled all the names of marketing managers randomly. And marketing manager in the scheme of things are not like really so high up. Every multinational, every marketing manager has compiled their names with the intention to say, these people must know who I am, they must be my friend. Seven years later, these marketing managers are the marketing, senior marketing managers, marketing directors today. So networking can't harm you. You have to network and network and network because as many people as know about you and the kind of quality of work you bring to the table, the better for you. So these are the two key success factors if you're really going to make any headway in this business. Okay. Um, since you started um, Extreme, I'm sure you've faced challenges. It's still a Absolutely. baby. Yeah. Tell us about these challenges and how you've been able to overcome them if you did. And if you haven't, how have you been able to manage these challenges? I, I say Extreme is work in progress, to be honest with you. I still ongoing challenges. There's this stereotype out there that Creative people are not good business managers. That's the first stereotype hurdle you need to cross. Uh, I'm a creative person. My background is creative. People just believe the business is not going to work. Actually, there's a, one of our key clients. They gave us a contract, all right, and put us on retainer. But there's actually another clause to the contract that if after three months, this guy is not able to keep the business running or slash his retainer by 50%, I will give him another three months. If he's still, if the business still know it's diving, then we'll show him the door. But six months, we're still here. So it's been able to like overcome that stereotype that you face in our industry that have, they put creative people in a box. As a creative man, you cannot be an entrepreneur. That is really, really major. And for me, I think my answer to that is, because I'm a creative person, it makes me a, a creative entrepreneur. I'll take certain risks that normal creative people won't take. I'll push the, the, my work to the edge that normal business now uh, advertising entrepreneur won't go won't go to so uh, those are one of the major challenges that we faced. Okay, so uh, what motivates you? What's your inspiration? Where do you get inspiration from to do all these things you do? You know, all the ideas, you know, where where do your creative juices come from? I, I think it comes with the kind of young talented team that I have surrounding me. That I, I, I shout out to all the guys at Extreme Ideas and within the group. Fantastic guys, they make me feel old, but <laughs> I need to find out to let them know that I still got game, you know, so I still want to come to the table with brilliant ideas to make them feel, now who's the boss, you know, so 
so they challenge me a lot. I, I really, really respect that. And so, but I, I think it's just from I hate to hear the word no. I don't know what that means. I mean, if you just tell me I can't do anything, then I'll show you I can do it. Really, I, I, I can't. I have the point to prove to myself and uh, to the brands that I am responsible to that we can do it. I mean, it's not as a brand came into this market seven years behind MTN, behind Blue and Airtel. I remember a journalist once said that she thought it was impossible for any telecoms brand to come to this market and tell us anything new about telecommunication. But Slat came and we did it. Came in zero subscribers, seven years behind. Today, 20 million subscribers are still counting. So those are the kind of stories that I love to tell. And we launched them into this market. Those are the kind of stories I want to be associated with. I'm, I'm passionate about my brand and the kind of energy that I do so I just feel that keeps me going to say, look, I need to do more. I just want to keep going. Okay, um, of course, mm -hmm. all the journey for the four extra ideas, but now the brand major brand. That being the mistakes, you know, yeah. when you took the wrong time, yeah. you know, and landed you <laughs> <laughs> at the wrong place. Yeah. So tell us about these mistakes and tell us how it has made you, what you've learned from them, how it has made you well, actually, extra ideas will have started maybe like since 2007, 2008. There was this brand, this liquor brand that was trying to come into the market. And uh, I'm not going to mention them. And they had a budget of like $150,000. And I just thought, yeah, this is my break. I need to go get it. You know? And I, I didn't even have a complimentary card. I did something printed on cardboard. Extra ideas wasn't even registered as, a, as an entity. And I said, yeah, we. we I hired one of my friends, one babe, to say, okay, she looks good as my sidekick. We went for the presentation. <laughs> but somehow, I, I guess I just wasn't my choice at I think it should be out 2004, right? 2004, not 2008, 2004. I, I wasn't my choice enough. There was a face off between me and the key client contacts, and I sort of blew my cool. So, I, I, I mean, some of the things, one of the big major things I've learned in this business now is patience. You have to be patient with people because you're going to see a lot of naysayers coming here telling you you can't even do it. You're going to meet a whole lot of people who pretend to know what they're doing while they don't actually know what they're about. You're going to meet some really, really brilliant people who are going to make you feel maybe doubt yourself. So you're going to meet all sorts. And your job as maybe a CEO, as a person who has the umbrella view for the business, is to keep calm and be able to like take a cool, rational decision instead of just going to blow your top somewhere. Okay, so, uh, what, what, what are the things you know now, right? Apart from patients like that, right? yeah. uh, what are the things you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Well, I, I, some of the things that, I, it's just to be able to like conquer your fears. Because for so many, for so many years I worked in all 17, 18 years for a whole lot of people, you know, serving diligently. I call it doing my time, I was paying my dues. But if I know now, and too many times I, I, I told myself, look, it's time to get up and go now. But I was very scared. I was very, I was very, very doubtful about my ability to pull this off. But at some point, I think 2012 was like the year of the dragon, personally for me, because I had to come out and breathe out fire and go out there and try and achieve my dreams, you know, because, so if I know now, now talking to somebody, one Kenyan dude who is like a big, uh, I look up to him because of the kind of success he's recorded in advertising as well. He told me, he said, fear is the biggest enemy of mankind. And I, I, I definitely agree with that uh, position. So uh, I just know now that I have to confront my fears and be able to move my life forward. So. Uh, Let's talk about social media. Yeah. Yeah, social media, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you use social media personally? Yeah. And um, in your business? You do? Yeah. So, how, what impact has it had in your business? Awesome, because if I wasn't talking to you now, I'd probably be like on, on my Twitter, just people tweet at me. At, I'm the king of retweets, and <laughs> let me just use this opportunity to say retweets does not mean endorsement. So I might retweet something doesn't mean I agree with it, but I'm always on on Twitter. I have I think over six thousand followers on Twitter, not much, wow. but uh, yeah. Uh, for my business, I, I 
doubt if there's any advertising agency in Nigeria that's as active on, on Twitter or on social media like Extreme Ideas. We are always pulling out something, uh, sharing ideas. And, and I think part, part of the major impact that that has done for our business is being able to give us reach. We have connects and contacts across the globe today because we are constantly putting stuff out there and, and, and they've been able to share stuff from other sources as well. Okay, so uh, what's new? What's up for uh, Extreme Ideas? What's going on? What, 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 what plans do you have for okay, you know, the future the next five years? Extra ideas right now. It's right now. What's new is that we're so busy. Believe me, between now and the month end of March, the TV commercials we'll be shooting that we've gotten approval for is maybe close to ten. So we're really going to be busy. We're going to be shooting all over the place. So if you see us, don't be shy to say hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to be busy. And for the extreme group, we'll expand by the second and third quarter. The third and fourth quarter of this year. We'll probably set up our own media independent outfit, media independent outfit. We're going to set up our own PR firm. So look out for that. And by the first quarter of next year, we'll set up our own events management outfit. So there's so much in the pipeline right now. Honestly, I don't even know how we're going to cope with it, but we take every day as much time. The team is excited. The energy level is high. We want to shake the industry to its foundation because if we don't do that, then we probably are not doing anything, so we really look forward to all the things we'll be doing in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you and for having me. To wrap it up, yeah. you're going to uh, ask everyone this question. Yeah. How do you describe your journey in one word? Please not address it. Please not excite <laughs> Thank you very much. Dramatic. <laughs> so dramatic. I'm the king of drama. Nothing has come to me. No more way. I mean, every if you check all the major milestones in my life, it's been full of drama. Yeah, so an extreme idea is no exception. I've gone through many drama that will last some other people two lifetimes. Just we set up six months ago, so I'm the drama king. Okay, so thank you very much.